Hello everybody. This is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. Uh, decided to do a video update today. Um, this is like two weeks after my surgery. And uh, the last video I did about killed me. <laughs> I was too much walking for, for so sh soon after my recovery. I tend to be a little bit stubborn about that. But uh, I'm feeling a little bit better. So uh, we're gonna take a walk and I'll show you what's happened in the last week or so. Uh, so, right here is one of the big um, things that's happened. We finally got this tree down. Um, this was the tree that was sitting up here. If you look at my previous videos, you'll see how huge this tree was. And uh, try to walk over here without tripping. You can kind of see why we had to take it down. See how rotten that is? You see the core there? It looks solid, um, unless you really look at it, you can see all the, the damage from the ants, all the tunneling, and it leaves this kind of a thing here. Here's the branch here. So anyways, that's one of the big things that's happened. And then another thing is, you can see on my squash here, this is Celebration Squash. I got hit with powdery mildew or milky spore. I can never tell the difference between the two, I'll have to research it more. But I have, uh, hidden in here. This is my copper fungicide. Uh, I keep it here because it stays out of the sun, but I can remember to spray it daily um, to try to get that down. I'm not sure why I have it because this area never had milky spore or downy mildew or anything. And I made sure to thin out my foliage so there's plenty of air circulation. So um, I guess milky spore would spread because of the spores per se. So that's probably what it is and not powdery mildew because it does have circulation. But anyways, and I knew that I had two kind of different plants here because this leaf is different than the other leaves just by a little bit. But you can see I have a different kind of squash growing there than that one. So just interesting there. This is my glass gem corn. It's still a little on the short side, but it's putting out tassels and I'm getting some ears going there. So yeah, we're getting there. <clears throat> Look at the garden now. A lot of vegetation going on really, really thick and lush and just a lot going on here. Um, this is my flower pollinator bed. It's got some other things in it, but there's just lots and lots of flowers there for the pollinators. They love it. Alright, so this is my medicinal herb bed. That's what's mostly in here is medicinal herbs. Um, my calendula I had to plant. I forgot about it this year and it just got planted, oh, maybe two weeks ago. Um, as far as the seedlings, I grew them in the, the winter jug thingy. And uh, so I planted them two, two weeks ago and now they're actually putting uh, flowers out so excited. And throughout the video, you'll see kittens running around. My kittens are about 15 weeks old now, but so they run around everywhere. I don't know if the video can pick it up, but uh, there is a bunch of bees just buzzing, buzzing, buzzing all over the Gloria, which is what we want. We want our pollinator friends enjoying our flowers, and uh, they can go share it with the other flowers in here. So, all right. In this other area, we have calendula. I have some pink hyssop. I have blue hyssop. Uh, echinacea, white whorehound, chives. Um, this is milk thistle. It's a weed, but actually you can harvest the, the seeds from the milk thistle and that's beneficial. In the pot is um, a stinging nettle. It's kept in the pot so it doesn't take over the rest of the garden. I actually have to trim that because it's starting to get seed heads on it and we definitely don't want that uh, spreading. This right here is my potato bed. You see I have some potatoes sitting there. Um, we just harvested most of the potatoes and then I planted the biggest ones back in here. <clears throat> My hydrangea, isn't it gorgeous? Yes, yes, yes. So anyways, again this is blue hyssop here, sage, and then we have some milkweed mixed in it. I have some fig trees in the back. On the other side of the sage is bee balm. And then that's butternut squash up on the top there. And this is supposed to be sunrise sunflower, these ones here. <clears throat> and they have Italian parsley. 
I have four seasons of butter crunch lettuce that has gone to seed and mustard green in the back. I will collect those seeds and I'll be replanting this row with uh, lettuce that I'm growing in my seed pots right now. And I have some leeks, some kale. This is all plantain. It's wild, so I just let it go. These are my Roma tomatoes. You can see they kind of fell down here. My husband isn't really keen on using tomato cages because they're a pain in the butt. But you can see why we should use cages. I mean, most of my plants have fallen down on the ground. And I'm actually losing a lot of my harvest because they're rotting on the ground. But anyways, um, I do have some in cages. Those are Ponderosa pinks, the big guys. Um, and then in, in with them is elephant dill. And I also have um, bouquet dill throughout. Um, I have basil. And these are um, uh, sweet bell peppers. Not sure if I'll actually get a harvest from them just because they're being really shaded by, this is supposed to be yellow sunflower, but I'll show you what it looks like on the other side. This is Triumphal Valletta pole bean. It's a really purple, really pretty purple pole bean. And then growing in with it, I have bumblebee tomatoes and I'll show you those in just a minute. These are Kentucky Wonder uh, pole beans. And then next to it, I have my pumpkin. And these guys, you can see all the lacing and the leaves. Um, Japanese beetles have been here. I still have some. I've been taking a bucket. Over there is my bucket. It's uh, got soapy water in it. And in the morning, I just come in or have my husband come in. And when we see them up here or wherever, um, we knock them in in the morning. They don't fly well in the morning. Here's my fall crops in my winter sown jugs. Uh, so we can plant them. Uh, I got them in here a little late be because of my surgery. They should have been planted quite a few weeks ago, but we're going to give it a go anyways. I have, um, let's see, what do I got here? I have, I think it's pronounced auroch. It's a multicolored auroch. Really, really, really pretty. This is a Chinese long noodle bean. And then I have a couple different uh, um, lettuces. Uh, you got to ignore the writing on it. Um, these were what I used in the winter, but I actually have sticks in there of what they are now. But anyways, I have a couple different lettuces. I have borage and some mugwort. So that's what's going on there. So yeah, you can see my beans are still doing pretty good, even though the leaves are very lacy due to these Japanese beetle bugs. Uh, one of the pests that we just are starting to deal with now because of the rainstorm and everything in the heat is squash bugs. Let me see if I can find you some. Um, right down here. See these bad boys? Let's see if I can focus it without. That. Those are squash bugs. And right here is my defense against it. This is neem oil. And again, I just set it right here, that way I have it, and I can just spray and spray and spray. Um, you're supposed to spray like every three days or whatever, but I sprayed the last couple days because we found them in different spots, like over here, and I can show you a really good picture. It's really disgusting. If, if you don't like bugs, don't look. <laughs> but if, if you don't mind, look at that. Those are enemies, enemy number ones. Those are squash bugs. And and my little man right here, he's enemy number two. Just because uh, cats like to dig in gardens and use it as a bathroom. But uh, we've been training them to try not to do that. Okay, these are Cherokee Trail of Tears beans. And you can eat them either green, like this. These, these are fine, you can eat them green. Or I'll let them go to dry out, and you can eat them as a dried bean, which is what we're doing now. We got quite a few uh, of the green beans that we've been eating, and then we're going to let them dry. This is where my peas used to be. You can see some pea pods still there. We're going to rip all these out, and this is where my Chinese noodle beans are going to go. Right here is a broadleaf plantain. Uh, it grew here. Um, Plantains and things like that here are considered weeds. You know, people don't really understand that it's an actual beneficial plant. But since I know it's beneficial and it's not really bothering my garden, I just let it go because I harvest this probably about once a week um, and store it in my with the rest of my herbs. <clears throat> 
this is actually my uh, cauliflower bed and then I have tomatoes here. I used to have um, garbanzo beans but they didn't do so well. So I took out the garbanzo beans and put in the tomatoes. And then my Brussels sprout bed. <clears throat> All right, this is the back side of my purple pole beans, that Triumphal Valletta, I think is what it's called. I got these in a seed swap, but I see that Burpee sells them, and they are an heirloom variety bean, which is what I try to grow here in the garden. I try to grow heirloom variety uh, seeds, not hybrids, um, not GMOs, though you really can't get GMOs as a um, homeowner. But um, I want to go with the original plants that uh, God created as much as possible. Um, so anyways, and then these are my um, bumblebee tomatoes and I planted them right here because they actually are uh, indeterminate and so they grow really really tall so I've attached them to the back side of my trellis. <clears throat> so them and the beans get along very well, they're very happy together. You can see what they look like, really really cool, I like the coloration, oh here's another one down here. The coloration kind of cool. Not quite ripe yet, but um, really neat. <clears throat> so, and then the back side of my, these I think are current tomatoes. I don't have the label here anymore. The label got moved. Um, but they're very wonderful little cherry tomatoes. All right, this is supposed to be a yellow sunflower. I want you to see the color of that. Let's see if I can get you. Isn't that pretty? And the other one that I showed you is supposed to be a sunrise. Now I think either the person who put them in the seed thing got mixed up or they're mixed up on what color they're supposed to be because to me that one looks like a sunrise and the other one looks like it's yellow. So tucked in here in my um, sunflower bed I have kurabi and I had leeks over here somewhere but I think they got trampled down by the dog going in and out. But these are my sad state of lemon queens they've lived out their life expectancy so they look kind of sad right now but um, they're drying out and uh, they'll be good for harvesting for our birds and and things like that later so even though they look sad it's the end of the season for them they're supposed to be doing that another broccoli bed here <clears throat> and then this is something new that i planted this year you guys probably see this in the wild a lot this is a mullein plant, really, really beautiful plant. Um, I have three or four of them tucked in here. Uh, mullein I use for medicinal purposes as well. And I wanted a place where I could harvest it where I knew what was in it. Um, out in the wild, like I'm sure there's some out in the pasture here, uh, you don't know, really know what's in it. So since I know what's in my garden, I feel safer with growing it in here and harvesting it. Nasturitums, these uh, self-seeded themselves from last year, which is cool because every time I try to go, grow them myself from seed, it just doesn't work. I get like one or two plants, but I got two plants out of them reseeding themselves, so that's kind of cool. <clears throat> this is a sweet potato tucked in here with a rhubarb and then another fig tree. This was my bush bean plot. We ripped them all out because they were getting eaten by bugs. Um, you go to pick the beans and they're just full of bug holes. So um, we took care of that. And as you can see, ladies digging in there right now. She's going to use that as the restroom. But uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to be replanting this with my lettuces and things like that. And I'll be putting forks and things in to keep the um, animals out of here. But um, for now, you know, I just leave it alone. <clears throat> it doesn't bother me too much. These are, I have two different types of marigolds. I have the harlequin, and then I forgot what these are. Um, almost all my plants, the seeds and stuff I get are from Baker's Creek. So my marigolds are from Baker's Creek. Um, this is sweet corn. I can't remember the name of it right off hand. Um, it didn't grow so tall because this area of my garden doesn't seem to be very fertile, but it is putting out some corn, so we'll see what that looks like in a little while. And then more of my um, broccoli. I have more broccoli, more broccoli, lots more broccoli. Cabbage. You can see I got cabbage moss all around this. And then this is a broccoli that's gone to seed, and um, I'm going to harvest the seeds from it 
you know, when it's time. And then a catmint plant and a lemongrass plant. So, and then um, these are the tall variety of snapdragons. I really like them because snapdragons are one of my favorite flowers. And these guys get really, really tall. So they really um, add a nice color um, to the garden and a height variance compared to the smaller ones, which are really short. <clears throat> So back this way, this is tansy. I just planted it this year. I planted it, oh, I think four weeks ago. I planted it right before my surgery. So this is tansy, then peanut. Uh, this is red coxcomb, and then a yellow kind of celosia. It's in the same family. These two are celosias, but this one's more of a coxcomb shape than this one is. Um, this is amaranth, and it's starting to put out its seed heads here. Um, and then more of that um, marigold. It's really, really pretty. And then, like I said, this is Gallardia, my husband's favorite flower, or one of them. He loves daylilies, too. And then bee balm. Over here we have lavender. In the pots all around the area, if they don't have flowers in them, they have carrots. And a lot of my carrots have died because in, while I was recovering from surgery, um, these pots were left and weren't watered very well, so I lost quite a bit of my carrots. But anyways, and then um, this is all chamomile here. It reseeded itself. <clears throat> Some more snapdragon. You can see how tall this is. I mean, that's a really tall snapdragon. And then we've got kale tucked in here and more sweet potatoes. This is originally my um, rose bed. I have a rose there. And I have a rose there, and a rose over there. But um, the roses started, they didn't, half of my roses didn't come back. So I just planted my vegetables in here, uh, you know. And then uh, my grapevines back there. And then over here I have um, my tires, which have potatoes in them, and also grass from the prairie. <laughs> kind of funny. And I think this is sorrel. I haven't... Um, or doc, curly doc. I haven't harvested this yet because I wanted to do a actual identification of that first before I harvested it. But I believe this is called curly doc. Again, this grew here wild. It's one of those weeds that we have here. <clears throat> so that's a look at the garden. And I'll take you to my other garden. I have a couple different spots where I have gardens here. Just because I had way too many plants. But luckily I had some, some different uh, places to kind of tuck them around the property. So this is the first bed that I used to tuck things in. <clears throat> this used to be my duck run over here last year. So it's very fertile ground. <clears throat> so um, these are uh, cucumbers I just replanted. And the other ones died. Um, because they were in a pot and cucumbers get root bound very easy. Anyways, that, so that's cucumber. Some more of that, what I believe is curly dock or sorrel. And then all along here, all along the fence line, these are potatoes. We had a bag of potatoes that we got from somebody that uh, sprouted seeds really quick, uh, you know, or sprouts. And so we just threw them out here and covered them up with leaves and uh, they're doing really good. And then uh, another broadleaf plantain. This is my atomic orange corn. It's at the end of its season. Um, it's starting to dry out. Um, my husband did harvest one cob because he didn't know if this was supposed to be sweet corn or dried corn. And uh, while well, it's supposed to be dried, so you need to wait till the plant's completely, completely dried out, and then we'll harvest the corn from there. And then this is supposed to be a mammoth sunflower, but um, to me, it doesn't look very mammothy. <laughs> Uh, just funny how things happen that way. Then in here we have um, tucked in, we had some mustard greens. They're starting to die out a little bit. Um, and then some eggplant and some more parsley. Um, this got planted really late, so I'm not sure if we'll actually get eggplant this year. But um, trying to grow the plant anyways is interesting. All right, I'll take you over to the last spot. <clears throat> trying to walk around this area without falling is interesting. <clears throat> My husband's been very, very busy with different different jobs and things like that. Uh, 
and then the weather's not been very cooperative so I'm trying to get the the broken tree all cut up and moved out of the way has been just one of those projects that hasn't uh, happened yet <clears throat> but that's the life of landscapers their own yards look a mess because they're landscaping other people's yards so this is my other area this is actually supposed to be my sun perennial bed but we didn't have any plants yet for to plant in here some flowers so this is the overflow of my tomatoes that are in cages and my basil you can see it's looking really good so that's what my garden's looking like right now um, it's doing really well excited from the terror of the squash bugs which I hope to nip in the bud real quick so I just thank you so much for watching and keeping up with me on my updates um, if you have any questions or comments leave them below and if you did not know I do have another channel devoted to my business of soap making and tie dyes it's colorful creations soapery and crafts so thank you so much for watching everybody have a blessed day bye bye